In today's video, I'm going to show you how I create and send brand proposals to clients in Notion. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had struggles over the years with clients not knowing how to download their contracts, download their brand proposals, accept them and fill in the contracts and send it back. You know, that signature always seems to trip people up. At least that's been my experience. And so since moving over to Notion, what I really like about it is I've been able to integrate it with a third party tool that's completely free. It's called Tally. And what that's allowed me to do is incorporate a section at the end where they can accept the brand proposal and my client agreement there on the spot. So they can sign it on the screen itself using their mouse or if they're on a tablet, they can use that and they can just send it off and it automatically goes into my Notion account in a database that I call client proposals. So that might sound complicated, but it's actually really straightforward. We create the brand proposal, we have a form on that, for on that proposal for them to fill in and then once they accept it, it will automatically go into our client proposal database and it'll show that they've got their signature and all that good stuff. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through all of that. So let's start with the brand proposal itself. You'll see here, I've just got a call out with a welcome message. Typically there'd be a video, I will record that in Loom and I'll put that in there. And in that video, I'm just walking them through this proposal as well. So they have a clear understanding of it and everything that I've included in it. Then I have an overview of their client journey. And on the right here, I have my five stage process that I use. You'll see this drop down has a lot of text I just fill in. Your process might be different. You'll see here on this proposal that I'm sharing with you, it looks a little bit different, but we've got here different steps that you can customize and make your own. So I've got onboarding, brand strategy, content and design, website development, delivery and training. And then I go into their proposal and we've got scope of work and I've got deliverables base pack package, I've got pages and features included here and this I'll customize to whatever their project is. And then I've got additional items. So here it's quite often I'm asked to do a professional email setup, Squarespace scheduling. Another one is Squarespace memberships or some kind of course creation that's popular as well. Then you'll see here, I've got an overview of the timeline and this is just an example. So I've got a holiday notice for if I'm off. Right now, that would be the case. So I've got a little note in here. Then I've got design estimate timeline. I've got session availability. So I do my design in two parts. We have brand strategy sessions and then we go into your design week. And your design week is just a slot in my calendar where I'm solely focused on your website design. I will only ever take on a maximum of two clients at one time, but typically it's only one. And I do that so that all my attention can go on that one project at one time. So I'll give them some session availability and then I'll say when the next design slot is to make sure it lines up with their timeline. And keep in mind that I'm sending this after I've done a project inquiry call. So a lot of this conversation has already taken place. And we've all sort already sort of made agreements on availability and timeline and all that good stuff. This is just sort of a follow up and to formalize it and have everything in writing. So here we have the project timeline and I outlined the different phases. I've got details, what the deliverables are and an estimated timeline for each section. Then I have roles and responsibilities because again, managing client relationships, as you know, can be really challenging. And a lot of the times we end up chasing clients up for certain things. I found the way around that is to be really strict in our brand proposals with both their responsibilities and their terms and conditions. So having something like a 50% deposit that's non-refundable and if you don't meet your responsibilities, you know, you could lose that and have to rebook usually does a really good job of making sure they take that design timeline seriously and they don't just kind of put me off, which is what would happen before. Now, there are cases that are that come up where, you know, I'm not super, super rigid strict. If you are a day over, then you have to book the slot again and pay another 50%, nothing like that. But it's just a case of managing client relationships and being very clear and setting those boundaries up front because I find that if you set those boundaries up front, then clients usually 
stick with them. I think there's only one time that I have had to wait a really long time to be paid because most of the time I have it set up where I'm paid up front. And that was like such a game changer for me when I started implementing that policy. Like suddenly I was always paid and I didn't have to deal with the stress or the time wasting or just not sure when I was going to get paid for the work that I'd done months and months ago. So I highly recommend that you're very strict with your responsibilities and your client agreement. Then we have project communication. So I just put a note on how we communicate. I've got my office hours here, booking additional calls. So I always make my schedule available to design clients now. And if they want to book a 20 minute slot during a time working together, they can. They have a link to my scheduler and they can do that. And they also have a custom calendar that is unique to them. So it's not the same calendar that I'm using to book project inquiries. Providing feedback. So just a note to say you need to provide feedback in a timely manner. And then just another note on additional requests that might impact the timeline or incur additional charges. So this could be if they want to book another coaching call or something like that or extra design work, then that would be an additional request. Then here I have our key project meeting. So I've just got a table here and it's got the date and time, the milestone, the details and the status. So I've put an example here. There's always three key project meetings that we have. Project inquiry, brand strategy session and then their training and transfer. So I'll put these in. Not all of the dates will be rigid. Like sometimes I'll I'll change them but it will always be in written format and I've got a note to say that as well. Then we have project estimate. So I'll put in an estimate of the project and you'll see here I've broken it down as this is your project estimate. This is your additional software because I could charge it as one and I used to do that, but I found that I ended up shortchanging myself and clients didn't appreciate like a lot of the, the money they were paying to me was actually going to Squarespace or the, whatever their hosting provider was or domain provider. So now I keep that separate. So it's This is what you're going to pay your designer and all this additional stuff you have to pay to your software company and you might have to pay that every single year. I like to be really clear and differentiate that now and then I'll give them the total project estimate so they have a really good understanding of exactly how much it's going to cost and then I've also got invoices and payments are made through PayPal. I also do Stripe but I've used PayPal since the beginning so I tend to stick with that. Here on the right, I've got your investments. So I've got three options. People always choose option two. I've never had anyone choose option one or three, but they're there just in case. So pay in full 50-50 or 50%, 25%, and then another 25%. I always get paid that last 25% before I hand off the design. Then we have revisions and additional fees. And I'll say that that's included in the pricing table, which I'll show you below. And then what's not included. So that would be your hosting, your email hosting, any additional copywriting or brand photography, any web licenses for fonts, all that kind of stuff. Stock images is a big one. And then down here, I've got a pricing table. So what I like about this is I have a full pricing table here. And you'll see that it's just a deliverable details price, the amount that will work out the total based on the amount. And then what type it is. And then I've got check boxes here. And so if I change the amount, this is going to change the total. So if I put five in here, you'll see here it goes to 1500. Not that you would need five brand strategy sessions. That would be worrying. But the point is I've got this entire pricing table. And then what I do is I just mark off what that client needs. And I customize the amount. And then I'll also include a table that filters out so you'll see here I've got a filter to show the type is software fee so they can see this is just for your software and this is what where that money is going and then project estimate is going to show them how much I'm charging based on what their needs are so in this case it comes to 3800 and you'll see here it's 3800 and their software comes to 564 But what's nice about this is when I'm looking at revisions and additional fees, say they come down here and they're like, oh, I want Squarespace member areas now. They can see, okay, $2,000, that's going to cost me that. If I check this off and I say one, now that's going to change their fee if we come up to the top to their project estimate. It now changes their fee and I can just come in here and adjust this. 
Then we have a client agreement and I always include the client agreement in here as a page. So if we open this up, now this is just an example. This is absolutely not legally binding. You should see a lawyer. It's it's just lower mipsum. Think of it like that. Nothing about this should be used. You should definitely consult your own lawyer, use your own client agreement, but that's where that goes. And then and then I've got a space for frequently asked questions. So these are my frequently asked questions. You can see this on my website, but I've included that here as well. And then we have next step. So I have a little message here. And then on the right, you'll see here, I've got the brand proposal. So all they have to do is type in their name, select the date, choose their preferred payment plan, choose if they approve the brand proposal, choose if they agree terms and conditions. And what I love, 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 love about this and again, this is using tally forms as they can come in and they can fill in their signature, clear it, and they can do it right there and then and they can submit it. And when they submit it, it comes right over here into my client proposals. And as you see, it includes the signature, which is awesome because now I have all of that stored in there as well. So like I said, your brand proposal is a little different because it's a template, but you have access to all of this. And again, to come in here and customize any of this, you just go to your full pricing, you add new, you would add your different elements. And then for each client, you would just check off what you want. So it's just if it's required and then you would customize the amount here as well. To change the currency, just click in here, go to edit property. And where it says number format, you can change the format to your preferred currency there as well. And here you would have to put in your own client agreement. This is not for use. <laughs> So you'll see here, if you come down here, you've got embed form or you can upload a PDF to sign. But what we can do is create a new table in Notion. I'll include this with the free template as well, but you will have to do the connection with Tally yourself. So you just have to make sure these columns are in place. You need a dates column, business name, payment plan, and you need to include your options here as well box for proposal acceptance, a box for client agreement, and a files and media column for their signature. And this is important because we need to match it up in Tally. So if we come over to Tally and we create a form, I'll give it a name. And the only thing about Tally is you have to build out the form manually, or, or at least that's how I do it. So I'll show you what I do. I come in here, I click the plus icon, I search for label, we'll insert that. And so this will be our date, hit enter, add plus. I'm gonna search for date, that's there, insert that. And then I'm gonna add another block, another label, this time business name, short text. So I'll insert that in my placeholder text. I'll just put business name. I'll add another one. Again, label, payment plan, click here. I'm gonna do a drop down this time. I'll insert that and I'll insert the option. So we have pay in full, 50-50 split payment or 50-25 payment plan. Then we'll add another label. And this will be our proposal acceptance. We'll add another label and this will be our agreement. Then one more label and this will be for our signature. I really can't tell you how excited I am that you can add a signature in here. It truly, like, I spent so many months looking for a tool that I could do this with. And then I found Tally and I was like, yeah, this is the best. So we'll insert that. And so we now have our form. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit publish. Then under integrations, you're going to connect to Notion. You'll see here you select your Notion account, select a database. So you click down here and pick the right database. In this case, we've got client proposal, so I'll select that. Then I'll have to map each property so the information goes in the right place. So here under date, we want to match that to date. We'll add a property. We want to match business name to business name. Add another property. We want to map payment plan to payment plan and proposal acceptance, wrong one to acceptance and then the final one we want to map the agreement to the agreement then we'll hit connect with notion and that will sync it and what that means is that every time somebody fills this in is going to go into your client proposal database so the final thing we need to do is embed the form on the proposal page itself 
So what we're going to do is embed the form, we'll do standard. And I've kept this really, really simple. You can play around with the design if you want. I like to keep it simple so that it's just a quick, clean embed. And you'll see here, I haven't added all the additional placeholders, but I probably would do that. You can also play around with the design if you want. I'm just showing you quickly. But once you're ready to embed it, just copy the embed link, come back to your brand proposal. Let's go to your template here and I'll show you how this works. Come in here and we're just gonna paste. And then we're gonna create an embed. And you'll see here, they can now fill that in. And if I go ahead and do it as an example, so we'll do the date as today, business name, payment plan, I accept, I accept. I'm just gonna do a squiggle. I'm gonna show you my signature. Are you crazy? This is the internet. Then I'm gonna hit submit and it'll say thank you for completing this submission form. We'll come back out and if I come over here, you'll see that now has said I've accepted that. So that is all working fine. I'm gonna delete this one. We'll come back to your brand proposal. Now the final step is how you share this with clients. So if we come up to the top here and move me over and I hit share here, you'll see I've shared to web. If I open this drop down, I can change all of these different settings. So I don't even allow editing on this. I could add their email in, but that's gonna ask them to have a Notion account. It can get messy. I usually, usually just share to web, copy the web link, turn all of this off. And then if we open a new window in cognito mode, and I paste that in there, they can come in, they can see everything, they can access everything. But when we get down to the bottom here, because we've got that embed and because it's embedded through Tally, they can still sign it even if we haven't set the permissions to edit in the page itself. So that's another thing I really love about this. They can view it all, but they can't customize it. But then it gets to accepting and approving their brand proposal and they're still able to click in and put in all of their details. So that's how I have been using Notion for brand proposals. I've only been using it for maybe six weeks. I found it to be successful so far. Everybody's different. This might not work for you. You have to sort of consider your business, your clients, how you do things. But like I said, if you want access to the template, the link is in the description. All you have to do is sign up to my newsletter and you will get access to that and all of the templates I've been given away for Vlogmas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.